there are many different states out there where you cannot legally, as a minor, get a tattoo. And I think that's always good to focus on because let's take it outside the transgender issue for a moment. Why would you have that rule on tattoos for people under 18? Because, for everybody out there listening right now, if you allowed a 14 or 15-year-old to legally get a tattoo, you might well end up with a tattoo that looks really ridiculous when you're 22 or 32 or 42. In... Oklahoma right now there is a bit of a kerfuffle there is a a protest that has been underway where they seized the state capitol and this is all because of a transgender uh, law or transgender laws that have not been signed yet as I understand it but there are issues uh, issues around it People are upset about it, and we wanted to talk to you about what exactly is going on here. So it's called Senate Bill 129. And, well, before actually, before we get into uh, exactly what's in all these bills, Clay, la- last we had, had checked in on this, they had stormed the, uh, stormed the Capitol, and there was a Trans Lives Matter group. Uh, Trans Lives Matter, which I had never heard of this before. I think it's interesting because Blue Lives Matter got so much anger from the left. How dare you appropriate? Uh, how dare you appropriate the oppression of the all black- lives matter? All got lives matter. So yeah. much criticism. Um, so, but Trans Lives Matter is apparently okay for the left, which is is so is so interesting to see to see how this how this goes. Um, and they're they're sh- here. We actually have some audio here. They are chanting just in case you're wondering. Trans lives matter. Play it. Right. So that that's they're very clear about what they're there to do and who they are. Uh, so there are about uh, over 100 of them from Oklahoma Oklahomans for equality and freedom. Fascinating the way they name these groups, isn't it? Uh, they were outside the Capitol. They made their way into the rotunda. The protesters were calling on lawmakers to vote against a variety of bills that would have prohibited gender reassignment surgery or hormone therapy for those under the age of 18. Specifically, the Senate Bill 129, which is being called the Millstone Act, that would ban treatment for people under 26 years of age by punishing the doctor. So effectively, Clay, if you're a doctor and you do a trans surgery for people under the age of 26, you uh, can lose your license and even be criminally prosecuted. So there are a few different a few different bills that are all at issue here. Like I said, there's the Millstone bill. Um, there's also a bill, the less restrictive House Bill 101. Now, that would stop doctors from giving a referral for puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and gender reassignment surgery for anyone under 21. And then there's Senate Bill 252, which would prohibit anyone under the age of 18 from receiving gender reassignment surgery. Um, And then Senate Bill 250 would prohibit medical officials and entities from receiving reimbursement from Medicaid if they do gender transition services. So there's a whole variety of stopping gender transition surgeries within certain age ranges in Oklahoma. I think that the, I think the governor said we're going to have them on next hour. I think that they should continue through with this. I think the notion that anybody under 18 should have any of this done is barbaric and crazy. Yeah, I think the under 18 is a really easy argument. I, I don't know what the law we will ask the governor. I'm not sure what the law is on, for instance, tattoos in Oklahoma, but there are many different states out there where you cannot legally, as a minor, get a tattoo. And I think that's always good to focus on because let's take it outside the transgender issue for a moment. Why would you have that rule on tattoos for people under 18? Because, for everybody out there listening right now, if you allowed a 14 or 15-year-old to legally get a tattoo, you might well end up with a tattoo that looks really ridiculous when you're 22 or 32 or 42. Like, that doesn't seem crazy to me at all 
to believe that that is uh, a, a law that makes total sense. That, relatively speaking, you may not like the barbed wire tattoo that your 16-year-old got on his biceps, but by and large, that isn't going to... Remember when the barbed wire tattoo was say, Has anyone popular? gotten a barbed wire tattoo on a bicep since 1994, Clay? All right. Uh, in 1994, that's my point. 1994, you got the barbed wire tattoo. You were a badass. By 2004, you were like, why did I ever think getting a barbed wire tattoo on my bicep was cool? Everybody's like, why do you think you're in in sync? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so people make bad decisions with tattoos. But in the grand scheme of things, you can get a tattoo removal, I think, like all those things. If we're, as a reason society out there, of the opinion, oh, we got to keep tattoos away from kids under 18. We got to keep beer away from kids under 21. We got to keep rental cars, which to me is still pretty crazy. A lot of you out there, remember, you couldn't rent a car in college. You got to keep rental cars away from kids until they're like 25. How in the world does it make sense to allow someone to get their breast removed at 15 that's child abuse like i i don't even understand how this is remotely controversial and this is where this moved very quickly buck from we're trans and we just want the right to live our lives as we are to if you don't agree with a six-year-old's ability to choose their own gender then you're barbaric transphobe i mean buck i had a friend who talked about this i think on the show before and I bet there are people out there listening to us right now, especially if you're in New York or L.A. or you're in a uh, a big city, a left-wing location. There are regular emails that go out where they say, hey, so-and-so is six years old and she now identifies as a boy or she now identifies as gender non-binary and so we're going to take it seriously. And my wife, we had this conversation, and I, I think it's perfect for anybody out there as a parent we don't let our six-year-olds choose what they eat because we don't think that they have the mental you know, wherewithal because a six-year-old would say, I want cake or I want ice cream for every meal. And we say, no, you know, if you're going to have a cookie, you've got to eat your broccoli or whatever it is beforehand. That's what parenting is. Parenting now in some of these communities and in some of these schools, and this is happening increasingly in elite, high-end private schools is where this has taken off. You're going to treat a six-year-old like they can choose their gender? I mean, this is this is madness. I also want everyone to know that while this is playing out in Oklahoma, the issue of transgenderism for children, uh, for minors, has, for one, it exploded by the numbers. And anyone who is looking at the data honestly will say, this is something that is more a fad than a scientific reality. That's just... This is clear. There's there's uh, rapid onset gender dysphoria was the term coined by the Brown University study that looked at, hey, what happens when a seven year old says, I think, you know, a seven year old boy says, I think I'm a girl. Oh, all the adults gather around. They make a big deal. And, oh, what can we do for you? And what are the other seven year olds think who are, you know, maybe at a point where they're a little unsure of themselves? They're seven. They're kids. They don't know anything. They go, well, if I say I'm a girl, too, then everyone's going to, oh, what can we do to cater to you and make sure that you're happy? And, oh, you're so brave. You're so brave. This is the stuff. And they can show this through the data that the chance of another kid in a class all of a sudden. Now, I know the activists say that's because they're just finally willing to speak out that they're trans, too. They're seven years old. They probably thought they were a platypus the month before. It's absurd. We all recognize this is absurd. The Biden White House, meanwhile. We remember this. This is just back uh, a few months ago. This was uh, oh, about a year ago, March of 2022. They put out the equality and visibility for transgender Americans statement, specifically, specifically singling out how we need to make sure that transgender kids, children, are a focus of this effort. And, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about reinforcing protection for transgender kids and including, this is the key part, gender-affirming care. So while, I, you know, the left-wing activists and everything, you could see that, you know, the crazy blue-haired nose ring maniacs running around shrieking, trans lives matter, you know, they're doing that, Clay. Everyone needs to understand, Biden White House is totally on board for this. 
pushing this, using federal power to try to advance this as well. This is not a minor thing. This is not a a side effect. This is the main effort. I think it's also important to emphasize they chose this battle. So everybody's out there like, why can't you just leave? Because that's the other argument they'll make. Why does this bother you so much? Why can't you just leave trans people along alone? Well, because we don't think that 14-year-olds should get their breasts removed. Like, that's a, a surgery that we don't think should occur for minors. We don't think that 14 and 15-year-olds and younger 12-year-olds should be given puberty blockers, which keep someone from hint- going into puberty and have massive, as you can well imagine, developmental issues. In fact, Buck, there was even in the New York Times a story recently where they said, hey, if you take puberty blockers, the overall strength of your bones is brittle because puberty is when you get all of those extra hormones that help to strengthen your body and your bones. And if you get that delayed, then in your 20s and 30s and certainly on for the rest of your life, you're more likely to have significant issues with your bones that seems like a really big deal so we're not choosing this battleground they are we're just trying to provide some sanity here the lifestyle libs who won't buy apples unless they're organic because they're so concerned about pesticides you know won't put that in their body's a temple they won't do that but they think that puberty blockers for a 12 year old there you know that's a great idea that's gender just even the term It is Orwellian. Gender-affirming care. Notice they have gone from gender transition. It used to be called gender transition surgery because you were trying to change from something. Now what they say is it's affirmation. Affirmation implies you already are this. We're just making it more clear that that's what you really are. It is intentional. It is dishonest. It's odious. And, and another way that you can tell this argument, Clay, is made in bad faith, these protesters, for example, the ones in Oklahoma, they're referring to these legislative acts as genocide. That is a quote, genocide because of all the trans youth that they claim, whom they claim, will commit suicide unless doctors will cut off their breasts at 15 and give them puberty blockers at 12. They're going to commit suicide. You are literally killing kids, they say, unless you let us chop off their genitals. This is how insane the left has become. Just for everybody out there listening, how many huge percentages, I would bet, of listeners have been tomboys themselves? Remember when that was a phrase? You know, like you'd have a 7- or 8-year-old girl, maybe, I don't know, 12-, 13-year-old girl before puberty running around thinking and feeling like she had a lot of boy characteristics and how many of those girls as they age become uh women and are very happy to be women now how much different would that be if when we were all seven or eight years old if instead of saying oh you know she's just kind of going through a phase let's let her develop you know and she'll decide what she wants to do she gets older what if we had said oh yeah you're a boy let's stop puberty from happening Let's totally change your gender. Let's keep, let's have a surgery to remove your breast. Which of those feels like a healthier way to treat seven or eight year old kids? Say, hey, you know, you're probably going to work through it. It's a phase you're going through. You'll be fine. And by the way, if you don't, when you become 22, you have the right to change your gender. Almost all of those girls out there, almost every single girl who had tomboy characteristics, a lot of you, I bet, are listening to us right now your kids or your grandkids maybe it was you you grew up your girls you're totally happy and how much different would that be if everybody gathers around to buck's point and says oh my goodness you must be a boy in a girl's body let's go ahead and get you treated for this you never hear about the people and they exist and you've heard from them there are interviews with them the people that went that that went through this And they realize they've destroyed their lives. They'll never have children. They'll never be gender normal. They'll never have a normal love life. They'll never have an orgasm. They'll probably be incontinent. Their bones will break. What about about the suicides of those people? Oh, no. You can't talk about that. Just even the mental health of those people. What they're doing is monstrous. This is when, when they do this to children, it is monstrous. And everybody should understand that.